This is a list of every engineering course I've taken over the last four years, and in this video, I'm gonna be ranking them using a tier list based on these four categories. Number one is how hard the content is, two is how difficult the exams are, three is how much study is required, and number four is how useful the course is after you graduate. The tiers I'm gonna be using to rank my courses are as follows. First up, we've got the S tier, and these courses are crucial for civil engineers. Without knowing the information that's taught in these classes, you wouldn't be a competent engineer, so regardless of whether the course is really hard or not, we need to try our best to understand the concepts taught in these classes. Next, we have the A tier, and these courses are both easy and essential. Then we've got the B tier, which are courses that aren't as easy, but they're still good to know in order to build a strong civil engineering foundation. Foundation. Next we've got the C tier, which are courses that aren't really necessary, but they're good for boosting your GPA or doing alongside other courses that take up a lot of time. And then we've got the D tier, and these courses are a huge waste of time. The content taught in these courses you'll never use again, and they take up way too much of your time throughout the semester. And finally, we've got the F tier, and these courses are just unnecessarily hard, and the amount of time and effort you put into learning the content for these courses never gets reflected in your grades. Often the exams in these courses are ridiculously harder than the questions you've been practicing in class, and a lot of people end up failing these courses and having to repeat it next year. One positive thing I will say about these courses though, is that if you decide to go into that particular niche of engineering, the content learn in these courses would be useful, but for the majority of people, this content is going to be irrelevant. First up, we've got Linear Algebra, and this course is the first of three math courses you take during an engineering degree, and honestly, it's pretty easy. In this course, you cover things like vectors, matrices, complex numbers, and probability, and you really don't go into any more detail than what you've already done before in high school. The exams and the assignments are pretty straightforward, and as long as you're following along with the questions that are being done in class, this course isn't very difficult at all. Now, the basic skills that you're taught in this class are used a lot in other courses, so for that reason, I've got to give it an A. Next up, we've got engineering materials. And in this course, you learn about how the structure of a material affects its properties. And you also explore the mechanical concepts of stress, strain, elongation, and material failure. In my experience of this course, there was lots of little quizzes we had to complete throughout the semester. And because we were going into a lot of detail in classes, these quizzes were really tricky. In reality though, for any type of civil engineering major, unless you decide to go into research, this course is pretty irrelevant. So for that reason, I've got to give it a D. Okay, and next is engineering science. And this course is basically just a quick recap of high school physics. The assessment for this course is clear and similar to the questions you solve in class, and the fundamentals you learn do apply to the more complex problems you solve in later courses, so for that reason I've got to give it an A. Alright, and next is creative engineering, and in this course you're presented with some sort of grand problem at the beginning of the semester, and by the end you're supposed to build a prototype and give a presentation on your solution. And seeing as this is a first year course, majority of the class doesn't really have a good idea of what an appropriate solution would be, so the whole class ends up coming up with a slightly different version of the same solution. There's no actual content taught in this course, so the only skills you really get are maybe improved presentation skills and then model building skills. So for that reason, I've got to give it a C. Next we have Calculus 1, and this is probably the most useful math course we take as engineering students, as a lot of the methods that are covered in this course come up again when we're solving engineering problems from first principles. In this course you learn how to differentiate and solve integrals, but for most people you would have already covered this in high school. Overall, the assessment for this course isn't particularly difficult, but I will say that because there are a lot of different types of questions that could pop up on the exam, you do need to spend a lot of time studying in order to get familiar with them all, so for that reason, I think it deserves a B. Next, we have Engineering Design Practice, and this course is a bit of a weird one. In this course, we basically learned about two different things. The first thing is the different considerations we should make when designing for different environments and economies. And the second thing is how to model mechanical components in SOLIDWORKS. For civil and structural engineers, the modeling done in this course is pretty useless because we never need to be able to do any of that again. And the design considerations we learn about were pretty straightforward. So for that reason, I've got to give this course a C. Next up is numerical and computing skills. And in this course, you get an introduction to programming. Here you learn how to solve simple problems using MATLAB. And then eventually in the assignments, you're challenged with solving practical problems. As civil engineering students, most of us in the class hadn't really played played around with these sort of programs before, so there was a bit of a learning curve. This made completing the assignments quite difficult. Overall though, the methods learned in this class can actually be quite useful for solving repetitive or tedious problems, so for that reason, I've got to give it a B. Next we have Engineering Mechanics, and the basics you learn in this course apply to a lot of the courses you do later on. Here you learn about things like center of gravity, center of mass, shear force and bending moments, 
axial tension and compression, and also about the second moment of area of different sections. This course does require you to do a lot of study, but it will be worth the time you put in because the professors can't really do anything crazy to catch you out on these fundamentals in the exam. So for that reason, I've got to give it an S. All right, that brings me to the end of my first year. Now let's have a look at my second year courses. First up is fluid mechanics and hydraulics. And to put it nicely, this course sucked. In this course, you learn about things like the properties of fluid, hydrostatic pressure, different types of flow, and the meaning of energy, work, and power in fluids. Now, to make it through this course, you need to spend a lot of time studying, and even then, you probably won't get a great mark. The exam questions for this course were way harder than anything we did in class, and for that reason, a lot of people in my class actually ended up failing this course. Overall though, the concepts in this course are important to know, but it's such a nightmare course, so for that reason, I'm going to give it an F. Okay, and next we've got Mechanics and Materials 1, and the concepts taught in this class are really important to understand. In this course, you learn how to determine the stress and strain in different materials so that you can design structural elements or material components effectively. This course does take a lot of effort to get through, but the information is vital, so for that reason, I've got to give it an S. Next we've got Construction Engineering, and in this course you go over the basic financial math associated with construction, and also look at ways to maximize efficiency on site by using the correct equipment and scheduling activities activities correctly. The concepts taught in this course are very straightforward and the assessment was very clear, so for that reason I'm going to give it an A. Okay, and next is the dreaded Calculus 2. In this course you do things like 2D and 3D integrals, and you also do a bit on second order differential equations. The content in this course is tough, and the math is well beyond anything you need to be able to do as a working engineer, and in reality it's actually well beyond anything you need to do in any of your later engineering courses. This course requires a lot of study and the assessment is quite tough, but seeing as you won't need to use any of these skills again, I've got to give this course a D. Next up is hydrology, and in this course you learn about hydrological processes like rainfall, evaporation and infiltration, and you also spend a lot of time focusing on flood estimation, flood frequency analysis and flood routing. This course is very technical and requires a lot of attention if you want to keep up with the pace of the professor. In my experience, the exams for this course were much harder than the questions we were solving in class, and for that reason a lot of people, myself included, struggled to get a good mark in this course. Now, the content in this course is important if you decide to go into like a water management area of engineering, but for most people it's probably irrelevant, so for that reason I don't think it's worth the headache, so I'm going to give it an F. Alright, and now we've got our first geotechnical engineering course, which is soil mechanics. This course teaches you about all the fundamental properties of soil, and also how we go about obtaining these properties through field investigations and laboratory testing. This course is assessed fairly and has a manageable study load throughout the semester, and for geotechnical engineers, I would actually rank this course as an S, but for civil and structural engineers, having a super detailed understanding of the concepts taught in this course is a bit overkill, so for that reason, I'm going to rank it as a B. Alright, next up is structural design, and straight away I'm going to tell you that this course is crucial for structural engineers. In this course, you learn how to complete load takedowns, work out wind loads, size steel members such as beams, columns and bracing, and you also learn how to design steel connections. This course does require a lot of study, but it's one of the most valuable courses if you want to become a structural engineer, so for that reason I'm going to rank it as an S. Alright, and moving on we've got Mechanics and Materials 2, and this course is basically an extension of Mechanics and Materials 1. Here the focus is on learning other first principle methods that you can use to find the stress and strain in materials. While the theoretical part of this course isn't very useful, in this course you also get introduced to something called finite element analysis, which is something you'll definitely do as a graduate, but you'll probably be taught this again by your seniors when you start working. So for that reason, I've got to give this course a D. Okay, so that's the end of my second year, now let's move on to third year. First up is structural analysis, and this course builds on the basics you've learned in engineering mechanics, and looks at more first principle ways you can find things like shear forces, bending moments, and deflections. Probably the most useful thing you learn in this course is what shapes frames should be making when they're deflecting, and also what their bending moment should look like under different loads. This knowledge is especially useful when you're checking the output of models you've made in computer programs, which you do a lot as a working engineer. So for that reason, I've got to give this course a B. Next up is geotechnical engineering, and in this course you build on the basics you've learned in soil mechanics, and learn how to apply them to more practical applications, like in the design of retaining walls and footings. This course does require a lot of study, and the questions can be quite complicated, so for that reason, I'm going to give it a B. Alright, next up is research methods and statistics, and this course is exactly what it sounds like. 
In this course, you learn how to research properly and also tell if a source is credible or not. This course would be useful if you were planning on completing a PhD, but for most people, that's not the case. So I've got to give this course a D. Next, we move on to construction project management. And in this course, you learn about the different ways that you can schedule tasks on a project and also look at different ways that you can keep track of finances on a project. The assessment in this class is pretty straightforward and you only need to use very simple math. So for that reason, I've got to give this class an A. Next is a similar course called Project Management Principles, but this course is actually easier and a little bit less relevant. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a C. Okay, and next is Concrete Structures, and this course is super relevant for me now. In this course, you learn how to use intricate hand calculation techniques to design beams, walls, slabs, and columns. This course will require you to spend a lot of time studying in order to get a good understanding, but you will be rewarded for that time in the assignments and the exams because there isn't a lot of things that that the professors can do to catch you off guard. For these reasons, I'm going to give this course an S. Next up is Civil Engineering Design Project, and this course is probably the most useful course if you decide to become a civil engineer. In this course, you take the relevant parts of fluid mechanics and hydrology and apply them to designing things like culverts and channels. This course has a steady workload, but is really important, so for that reason, I'm going to give it an S. Okay, and next is another geotechnical engineering course, but in this course, you don't actually learn any more content because it's purely project-based. This course was a real headache because we had to complete complete these projects with little to no guidance and we also had to use geotechnical design programs that we had no introduction to. This course was very time consuming as the computer program we had to use took ages to produce results and a lot of what we were doing was trial and error so it wasn't very much fun at all. For these reasons I'm going to give this course an F. Okay so that brings me to the end of my third year. In my fourth year, I had to write a thesis and then do a couple of project courses and electives. These courses aren't really relevant, so I'm not going to include them in this video. Now, just to quickly recap, the courses in the S tier are the ones you need to understand no matter what. You're going to be using this content a lot, and your future bosses are going to expect that you know this stuff. The courses in the A and B tier are still important to know, but having a comprehensive understanding isn't going to be necessary. For the C and D tier courses, you can pretty much remove this stuff from your brain because you're never going to need to use it again. Finally, for the courses in in the F tier, you can celebrate that you never have to go near them again unless you decide to go into that niche of engineering. In summary, I do want to mention that I've ranked these courses based off my own experience, and while I do like to think that my classmates would rank the courses the same way I have, there may be a few differences due to their own prior knowledge and interests. Generally speaking though, there are a few factors which would cause the rankings of these courses to completely change, but unfortunately those factors are usually out of your control. A couple of these factors could be the professor, the teaching assistant, and also how well the material's been prepared. In my opinion, having a good teacher and a clear set of material to learn from can make a world of difference when you try and understand something, but unfortunately, most of the time we just have to make do with the way things are. Although, one thing you definitely can do to learn as much as possible is to learn to study effectively and efficiently. In this video here, I talk about how to study effectively, and in this video here, I talk about how to best study for exams. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.